After a while, I felt a hand pulling my leg. I turned on my phone's flashlight and saw an old, wrinkled hand covered in blisters. I screamed. Lucas woke up and asked, What's going on? He found me being pulled under the bed. He followed me and grabbed my hand, pulling me up. He turned on the room light and looked under the bed, but found nothing. Hi, I'm Lady Sophia. I have three kids, Larry, Ethan, and my baby Amelia. My husband is often away from home due to work. Let me tell you what happened to me one day when he was gone. I was sitting on my bed with my laptop on my lap, browsing the web, and rocking Amelia's cradle with my other hand. Suddenly, the power went out, and the kids screamed and ran towards me. I said, don't worry, I'll light some candles so we can see. I brought a candle to my room and called out to them, do you want to hear a bedtime story? Yes, I want a scary story to fit the mood. I'm scared of hearing scary stories in the dark. Okay, I'll tell a slightly scary story. They gathered around me and I started telling them the story. Once upon a time, there was a monster named Tolma. He lived in the forest next to the village. The villagers warned everyone to stay away and not to enter it. And if they disobeyed, they would become food for the monster. Ethan interrupted me and asked, Does he eat kids too? Yes, he eats kids who don't listen to their mother's words. So Ethan will be a delicious meal for the monster. Yum, yum. <coughs> Enough. I don't want to hear anymore. Stop it, Larry. You really annoyed me. Now go back to your beds. I put the candle on the table next to me and went to sleep. It wasn't long before I felt something touching my foot. I moved it and said, Ethan, go back to your bed. I turned to the other side and went back to sleep. After a few minutes, I heard Amelia's cradle shaking. I said sternly, Ethan, I'll hit you if I open my eyes. The shaking didn't stop, so I opened my eyes. But I didn't see anything. I got up to close the window. Maybe it was the wind. Larry yelled from his room, so I went to see what was happening. I said, What's going on with you guys? Aren't you going to sleep? I found Larry crying and wrapped up in his blanket while Ethan was laughing at him. I said, what did you do to your brother? I didn't do anything. I was sleeping until I heard him screaming. I hugged Larry and asked, why are you crying? I felt someone pulling my blanket. I thought it was Ethan, but when I looked at his bed, I found him sleeping in his place. I turned to Ethan and asked, why are you scaring your brother? I swear it wasn't me. You came to my room earlier to scare me, and now you're scaring your brother. But I never came to you. I swear to you, Mom. I was scared, but I didn't show it to them. I said, go to sleep now. The electricity will be back soon, and I'll keep the lights on tonight. I went back to my room and found Amelia laughing so hard that her crib was shaking. Oh my God, I closed the window. Where did the drafts come from? I held her until she fell asleep, and then I went to my bed. In the morning, I went to wake up the kids, and when I opened their room door, I found Ethan's bed blocking it completely. Wake up! What are you doing here? It was Larry who moved my bed to scare me. Stop this silly joke. I never left my place. When I saw him moving, I was going to call you, but I was afraid you wouldn't believe me. Of course I won't believe you. The bed doesn't move on its own. Now go wash your faces and come to the kitchen. Drink your milk and go play in the garden. I went to change Amelia's diaper, but she wasn't in her crib. My blood froze. Where is the baby? She couldn't leave her place and no one entered the house. I heard her humming under the crib. I lowered my head and found her there. I took her out and put her back in her place. I called the boys. Playtime is over. Who took Amelia out of her crib? We didn't enter your room at all. We went from our room to the kitchen and then to the garden. I kicked them out and sat on my bed. I'll go crazy from their actions. I called my husband Lucas and I said, Hey, I need you to come back. Is everything okay? Did anything bad happen to any of you? There are strange things happening in the house. I tossed and turned all night and couldn't sleep. So I decided to bring the two boys to my room to check on them. As I got up, I found my legs hovering in the air. I screamed and my bed was raised to the ceiling. 
Ethan and Larry came in, and as soon as they did, the bed fell to the ground. I hugged them and cried. Don't worry, we'll be okay as long as we're together. I brought them into my bed and we slept. In the morning, Lucas had arrived home. What's going on here? Tell me all the details. Since the power went out, ghosts have spread everywhere. I think it's Tulma. Shh, don't mention that name again. Wait, where did you hear it? I told them the beginning of the story. He interrupted me and said, Have you gone crazy? Don't you know that he comes as soon as his name is mentioned? It got dark. So my husband closed the windows and doors, sprinkled salt around the house, and hung garlic cloves in every corner. I don't believe in these superstitions. Will garlic repel Tolma with its smell? That's what the legend says. Just nonsense. We went to sleep. Lucas and I were on the bed, and Larry and Ethan were on the floor. I brought Amelia between us. After a while, I felt a hand pulling my leg. I turned on my phone's flashlight and saw an old, wrinkled hand covered in blisters. I screamed. Lucas woke up and asked, What's going on? He found me being pulled under the bed. He followed me and grabbed my hand, pulling me up. He turned on the room light and looked under the bed, but found nothing. We can't stay here. We have to leave. He'll follow us wherever we go. Let's ask the spiritual healer. Your salt and garlic didn't work on him. I think he's stronger than an old man's remedies. Let's try it anyway. Maybe he'll help us. So Lucas brought the spiritual healer, who scolded me for my behavior. He asked, How are you summoning an evil spirit into your home, especially when you have a baby girl? He has been stalking her repeatedly. Yes, because he possesses infants and takes control of their bodies. Then Amelia, in a rough manly voice, said, Ha ha ha, you're too late. I'm Tulma, and I'll get rid of anyone who tries to get rid of me. Please hurry up, sir, and save my daughter. The spiritual healer recited several verses, but Tulma refused to leave. He negotiated with her, saying, I'll give you another body. I'll give you mine and leave the baby and her affairs. Your body is protected, and I can't enter it. But I like this beautiful woman. She's alone and needs company. I said, what nonsense is this? Tulma possesses isolated people who live in sadness and loneliness. I lowered my head and said, My husband is absent from home for months, so I stay alone in sadness and distress. It's okay. Let Tulma enter Sophia's body. What are you saying, sir? Tulma quickly entered my body. The spiritual healer grabbed my finger and pierced it with a needle while continuously reciting some verses and prayers. I screamed after drops of blood fell. Get out of here, Tulma, or I'll hurt you more. Please stop. It hurts me. I want you to leave this house forever. Tulma said, I will, but stop. Tulma left my body, and since that day, nothing strange has happened in my home. The spiritual healer advised us to recite words and pray regularly before he leaves. I made sure to teach my children what to say before sleeping to protect them from any harm. Thank you, my friends, for watching. Goodbye.